Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about Sacred Stones. Because we went over Fire Emblem 7 just the other week there, and I've actually been playing it again. Fantastic game. Uh, and it made me want to go back and play Fire Emblem Sacred Stones on Emulator, which I'm absolutely loving. I gotta say, this game gets a lot of hate. Um, I see a ton of videos hating on this one, actually. A lot of people saying... This is like their least favorite Fire Emblem, but I do see some good old nostalgia boys like myself who give this game a little bit of love. And I'm gonna be biased before I even really dive into this. I think the majority of what I do like here is the nostalgia factor because <clears throat> at the time that this came out, Western releases only had Fire Emblem 7. So myself and a lot of my friends, we were hungry for any Fire Emblem content at all. Um, and that just happened to be, next up, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. So I 100% was gonna take it. For myself too, I really just had Game Boy Advance at this time. Um, or Game Boy Advance SP. Ooh, gotta put uh, a little respect on that name there. Um, and so I didn't have any other systems. So really at the end of the day, Fire Emblem was like as good as it got. I, I don't remember there being a lot of other Game Boy Advance games I was really thrilled on other than Fire Emblem. Um, so anyway, all that to say, this game had me fired up. Now, the biggest hate that I see about this game all the time is the Tower of Volney. Essentially, you have a map feature in this game in between chapters that allows you to go to specific locations for skirmishes, um, which we've seen now in more recent games like uh, Fire Emblem Engage, but this one also had a Tower of Volney that you could use to basically grind up characters. Now, a lot of people think this is cheating. And I totally get that. But it's not a mandatory aspect of the game. If you don't want to grind, you think it makes the game too easy, just don't grind and don't make the game easier for yourself. Um, I will say, though, I've, I've done a run through this game. Even without doing Tower of Volney or any of the skirmishes, uh, I did find it, you know, a little bit easier than, than Fire Emblem 7, but that's okay. You know, and my playstyle, I've admitted this before in other videos, uh, is a little bit more that I like grinding up characters, just making them absolutely OP. And so it makes sense that I would like this game, uh, because you can basically max out every single character. There's also a feature in this game that allows you to, after you finish the main campaign, continue on to what's called the creature campaign which just means that you can continue to play the game after beating it through the tower of volney like i brought up earlier uh additional skirmishes and legato ruins was the name of the other place and i believe there was 10 levels in that you would have to complete a certain number of levels to get additional like phantom characters which were other characters in the game that had already died whether that be bosses you previously defeated or whether that be like you know, other characters you meet along the way. For example, there's one character you have this uh, in this that's a, a swords master named Joshua, and uh, his mother, the Queen of Dunes, I believe she is, um, she dies. She's killed in that uh, level by another character called Kalich. And uh, yeah, you actually get to, to gain this character after the game's completed. I think that's pretty sweet. I liked maxing all these characters, and Hopefully this isn't a spoiler alert for anybody. Um, boy, the game's been out for so freaking long. Like, that's honestly your fault at this point. But uh, the main villain of the story, um, Leon is his name, and I almost forgot that there, but you know, it's been a little while. Um, you actually get him as a playable character. So literally, you can get so many of the villains, including the final boss, and to me, that's pretty epic. Uh, he's honestly a really good character too. One thing I always wanted to do when I first got my hands on Fire Emblem 7 was I used to think, I, I loved Sages, by the way. Um, Orc was like my, my favorite character in that game. And then you get Pent in that game as well. And I was like, oh, these guys are so epic together. I used to take my favorite, uh, my favorite Lord, which was Elwood at the time. And then I would have Urk and Pent on either side. It looked like royalty coming up there, right? Do the same thing with Generals, by the way. It looks epic. Point is, in this game you can have a ton of every single class, right? So if I wanted to have sages, I could just have a ton. 
because it's not just mages that you can class up into sages in this game the way you had to in Fire Emblem 7. You could actually turn a ton of different units uh, into sages. I'm just trying to think uh, some healing units and also your light magic units that could uh, be upgraded into that was going to be bishops or sages. So I took all my mages, of course they're going up into sages. I took my light magic user and my healers, all of them were going to be sages as well. Um, and you actually get like pre-classes in this game, which is something that I thought was really cool. There's one class called a, a pupil, and that is essentially a class before mage or druid. So you have to get this character up to uh, level 10, and then you get to choose whether you want to make him a, uh, sorry not a druid, a shaman or a mage. For me, obviously I'm going the mage route, um, so that I can get as many sages as I want into the game. And anyway, that was just an example of something I like to do that I thought was epic, to have a, a big old team, all of the same class, all maxed out level 20, then promoted, maxed out level 20. Um, I even would get the, uh, oh, what's it called, the members card for the secret shop. Uh, and there, you could get all kind of uh, stat boosting items. So I would try to not only max out all the characters' levels, uh, promote them, and then max them out again, but then I would get all the stat boosting items to fully max them out. Anyway, I had an emulator, uh, so for me, like I could just hold the space bar, uh, and then I would be able to like fast forward through enemy turns. So that made something like that possible back in the day. I had to do it on the Game Boy Advance. It was not so simple. But point is, if you enjoy grinding in Fire Emblem, then I actually think Sacred Stones is like basically the perfect game for you. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there because I think that the game gets so much hype over a feature that honestly caters really, really well to what I imagine would be a lot of players that feel exactly the same way I do. As for the storyline, uh, it gets its hate too. And I, I will say it was lacking um, when I first played Fire Emblem 7. That was a really rich storyline. And we had Lin's quest you had to get through before you could even go on to the main quest, which was Elwood's quest, which was a ton of chapters. And then completing that, you could even essentially redo Elwood's quest with a couple you know, changing storyline features uh, for Hector's quest, right? And that was actually like an additional difficulty. So all of that I thought was really cool. I thought the character development in that game was fantastic. This game is missing some of that personal touch, but I do really like the main protagonists. You have Erica and a frame in this, and there are a couple of twins um, who essentially are, are orphaned now. Their father's killed at the beginning of this thing, and they have to go on a journey. Erica and a frame are your main protagonists in this game. They're a couple of twins who are orphaned kind of at the beginning of this uh, game their father uh, is killed and they begin a journey essentially to get these sacred stones and use them to defeat the final boss which ends up being uh, their friend Leon who is possessed by the Demon King that's a super kind of brief version of the whole thing but once again here you get uh, a couple options for routes you want to take right you can do uh, Erica's quest or you can do frames quest and they're gonna be pretty similar just like I said before with Elwood and Hector's quest but uh, I would say they're a little bit more different than Elwood and Hector's quest so uh, if that's a I guess you would say a, a plus of this game then you know, we'll give credit where credits due. but yeah the story's a little bland right you're probably not playing this game for the story you're playing this game to get another fire emblem under your belt because it's just such a fantastic series uh, and you're playing it if you just love grinding out for hours. Uh, and if you want to continue to play past, past the campaign. I find in a lot of games this style. Uh, I'll spend so much time building up a team that I'm so happy about. Uh, and I want to continue to use them. So having the creature campaign is so phenomenal for that, right? And all the other games, you know, Fire Emblem 6, which I'll do another video on uh, to probably next week. I haven't had as much time to play that game, but honestly, when you finish it, all you can do is go to the Link Arena and, you know, pick five of your best characters and use them in the Link Arena to fight other teams. It's really not much, right? And you probably have more than five characters that you're really proud of. 
Um, so I just like to see that all the hard work put into this game is something that you can continue um, to put to work long after you actually complete the campaign. That's a fantastic thing. That being said, I'm going to go FE7 campaign over FE8 campaign any day. Probably throw FE6 campaign over this as well, right? I'm not playing this game based off the campaign, though. I'm playing it for creature campaign. And I think if you haven't played it, that you should too. I would love to hear all of your thoughts on this game down in the comments. If you played it, awesome. Tell me if you agree with me. Did you like it or did you hate it? What is your play style when it comes to Fire Emblem? Do you want to just throw it on the hardest difficulty and, and play it like a chess match? Or do you like grinding characters up to be absolutely OP like me? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please like the video. If you didn't like the video, Thanks for watching this far anyway. Hopefully we'll change your mind in the future. That's all for now. Peace.